This is lesson three for module one, wind energy politics. In this presentation I will talk about environmental assessments and ecological assessments. Also financial implications and return on investment for these wind turbines. Green energy payback, tax credits and grant considerations, renewable portfolio standards, and feed-in tariffs. Environmental and ecological assessments are necessary when planning for a wind system, for a wind farm. Um, there are negative factors of installing wind turbines in some areas, such as the changes in the landscape and effect on possible effects on wildlife. The needed road and infrastructure improvements are also a consideration. Uh, a lot of times they need to widen roads, rural area roads. Um, resurface them, um, make them a little bit stronger for the weight that's necessary for carrying these larger wind turbines and other infrastructure improvements in the area. They also need to consider how the blade and the height of the tower may affect uh, migratory birds. If it's a large migratory path it's not a good idea to put wind turbines there. Um, also, op they act as obstacles to aircraft when near airports and helipads, and that needs to be considered. Also, if it's part of a, um, a flight path. Um, and other FAA regulations have to be considered, such as the, the blinking lights on the top and other rules and regulations. Um, another thing to consider is the noise levels that are if they're close to residential areas and also they must take a look at the rural area to see if there are um, too many buildings and residential areas within it if it's too densely populated they can't obviously put a wind turbine because or wind turbines in because they will be too close to um, pro uh, residential property and structures they must be a certain distance away from them for safety. Return on investment, or ROI, is the amount of revenue that's expected to offset the cost of the project. Of course, it's desired to have a positive return for any investment, so the money that you put into the project, all of the money that's put into it, um, eventually it should pay itself off, and then you should begin making a positive return or should um, profit from it. When determining the return on investment for wind energy, one must include the ability of the turbine to harvest the wind energy, how often the wind blows in that area, if it blows strong enough, and all future associated costs such as routine and preventative maintenance and decommission costs once it's went through its usable lifespan. Uh, governments encourage wind turbine installations by lowering the costs of initial planning and ensuring that installation costs will remain low and that adds to the return on investment. Landowners may also make money from wind turbines. This is done through the use of land contracts. So if a person owns farmland, say if a farmer has a, a bunch of farmland and they're wanting to put a, a large wind farm in, in that area, uh, he will be paid, he or she will be paid through the use of contracts, a, a contractual agreement on how much um, money will be dispersed to them. And these fees vary depending on how they set up the contract. And they may be paid monthly, semi-annually, annually. And it just depends on the wind farm and how they plan to off, um, help with cost. The um, reason why they do this, a lot of it has to do with the aesthetics and also the fact that part of their land uh, 
will be used for obviously the placement of the wind turbine and also access roads so they'll have to dig some of the soil out put in road pack and build those access roads from whatever main roads are in the area so the landowner will lose a little bit of their area also structures could no longer be built um, within close proximity to the wind turbine so the fees help pay for um, for that and encourages landowners to uh, forfeit part of their land for that purpose Um, also on that, I, sh I should say that uh, once they do the decommission, um, most of the time with large wind farms, or really uh, as far as I know all the time, when they decommission them, they dismantle the pieces and clear out everything and try to return the, the land owner's um, soil back to the way it was originally. They remove all the rock and dig down as deep as they can and then recover it with topsoil. Okay, green energy payback. There are many factors to consider with the purchase of a wind turbine or when developing a wind farm. And this is also somewhat true with even a small residential grid system. And they are discussed here in this table. On the left we have the associated cost factors. This is going to be money that needs to be paid in in order to get the project completed. Um, this would include inspections, data gathering equipment such as um, aviary equipment to record or um, monitor wildlife in the area. Also the installation of the rotor which requires cranes. Uh, also with the tower would require cranes and crane operators. Uh, maintenance costs, um, the site preparation, smoothing the land out, digging the holes for the foundation for the pad. Um, also permits and environmental studies, also shipment, various inspections for um, before startup, and also for larger wind farms, the transformers, distribution lines and poles, and all of the substations. That's a large cost. Um, some income factors that need to be considered. Um, depreciation for tax purposes, and I'll talk about that later, uh, a little later on. Also grants or tax credits, and how much electrical power will be produced in a certain amount of time, and how much will the wind turbine aid the grid, so just basic considerations that are associated with it, with the um, amount of income. Also renewable energy credits, which I'll get to. Um, another thing, turbine efficiency in the blade size. How how um, well does the wind turbine actually harness the wind and turn it into usable energy? Um, also, utility company reimbursement, which has to do with how much are they going to pay um, for your um, wind turbine or for a wind farm's power penetration into the grid. Payback calculations involve two parts. Um, all the costs are on one side of the equation and all the income factors are on the other side. And then uh, we look at is the cost going to be less than the income factor and hopefully in an ideal situation it will work out that way. Um, here this chart shows some input data that would be needed, that would be needed to be uh, it would be required um, by the installer or the company putting it in. Um, they look at the estimated cost per kilowatt hour, so they look at the energy as a function of wind speed and turbine lifetime. So basically, how much power can be created by the wind speed, the ideal wind speeds and how long will it last and overall considering those two factors right here the wind speed and lifetime how much power and how much or how much energy and how much will that um, save and they reference that to the 
electrical costs at the time and also 